For question number five, we will look into the second law of thermodynamics and the effect of the interaction between our atmosphere and space. As per usual, Ripley's is our preferred source of information. We live in a positively pressurized system, right next to a negatively pressurized system. In other words, we live in a non-vacuum and space is a vacuum. According to lamestream science, in between these two systems there is nothing. No wall, no container, no barrier, no enclosure, no nothing. Just a mythical threshold or boundary. Let's take a look at a vacuum chamber. Notice that it has to be a very solidly built containment apparatus, otherwise it wouldn't work. Now let's ramp it up. NASA's very own huge and monstrously expensive vacuum chamber that you and me, the taxpaying public, have unwittingly paid for. The walls on this thing are six feet thick reinforced concrete. They have to be, otherwise the whole thing would collapse in on itself when they turn it on. Time to take a look at what happens when you take all the air out of a container. Pretty violent reaction, wouldn't you say? That goods train container was made of some pretty robust material. Makes you think about the magical qualities of one of these, doesn't it? But basically you can see that it's very light and it's very flexible and it's very reflective. Do you want to give it a try? We'll come back to the preposterously expensive spacesuits in another fanboy question in the future. So in short, how does a vacuum exist next to a non-vacuum, when the second law of thermodynamics clearly states, and I quote, when two initially isolated systems in separate but nearby regions of space, each in thermodynamic equilibrium with itself, but not necessarily with each other, are then allowed to interact, they will eventually reach a mutual thermodynamic equilibrium. Oh, and by the way, it also quotes this. The second law is applicable to a wide variety of processes, reversible and irreversible. All natural processes are irreversible. irreversible. So, according to the second law of thermodynamics, our atmosphere shouldn't be allowed to exist at all, ever. Fanboys, please explain. Spacebusters, the channel that makes you think for yourselves.